Good morning, good morning, good morning, Ellison Wesleyan. Good morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. What a beautiful morning, Sunday morning it is to be in the house of God. Welcome to those in the sanctuary and those who are online. We also welcome you. And of course, those who are here for the first time. We extend an extra special welcome to you. Please stand as we acknowledge the presence of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father who art in heaven, we give you all the honor and all the glory. You are indeed worthy of all our praise. We bless you, we magnify you, dear God. You are worthy of all our praise, God. We submit to you right now, God. Reign throughout this sanctuary. Move however you want to move, God. Let souls be healed, souls be delivered, souls be restored in no other name but the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So anybody ready to praise the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Psalm 18, 3 says, I will call upon the Lord who is greatly to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies. This song is quite simple. It's call and response.
Let the God of our salvation be exalted. There is none like you, God. You're a giver of life, giver of peace. There is none like you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my God. There is none other. You are my God, there is none other. You stand alone as the Lord of all. Giver of life, peace, and prosperity. Lord, you are Lord of all. 
with all of our heart, all of our strength, because you are our God. You are great, great God. And there's, there's a name that is above every other name, that powerful name of Jesus. His name is mighty. His name is strong. It's a great name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
majestic name of Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up. There's no other name but the name of Jesus. That mighty name, that powerful name. Hallelujah. Demons have to flee at the mention of your name. That majestic name. Oh, yeah. Oh. There's power in your name. Power in your name. How majestic is your name oh, oh, oh. 
exalt you, Heavenly Father. We magnify your great name. Indeed, from the very depths of our hearts, we lift you high today, far above every principality, every power, every might, every dominion, every name that is named in this world as well as in the world to come. We magnify and glorify and exalt you. You, O oh Lord, are great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. You are beautiful for situation, the God of the whole earth. His Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king. We worship you, Father, with every part of our well-being. We put you in the big place today, in our lives, through our lives, around our lives, in your church where we meet today to exalt your name, offering up to you the sacrifice sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of our lips giving you praise and thanks and glory and honor we magnify you we thank you for the name of Jesus that is above every name at that name every knee must bow every town confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father thank you Father for tabernacling with us today as we honor you far above anything else and everyone else and we invite you in a very unusual and special place today in this sanctuary so that you would fulfill your purpose and you will be glorified significantly thank you father thank you thank you thank you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let the Lord name be praised. Let's magnify him, glorify him. Hallelujah. 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 What a good day it is to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Good to see all of you. Happy to see all of you, but you'll have that special greeting coming a little later. My role today is to do this very, very, very important promotion. Last Sunday, we, we looked and we shared with you how the journey continues with persistent prayer. Jesus said, my father's house shall be a house of prayer. But since you didn't hear that, let me repeat that. My father's house shall be a house of prayer. And speaking to the Pharisees, he said, you have not made it a house of prayer. But that is established also in the book of Isaiah, from which Jesus was quoting. We've asked you last week, to, and let me back up a little, we cannot do without prayer. Prayer is not a part of the work of the church. Prayer is the work of the church. And Jesus spent quality time, and this was, there were times when he went up in the mountain all by himself, moved himself away from his disciples and from other people and from ministry and went to connect with his father. You would read that after he went up in the mountain, uh, he prayed all night. And when he came back, the Bible says that it was there his father had given him revelation as to whom he should train for three and a half years as his disciples. We also read how he was able to drive out those who were not focusing on him, but focusing on themselves in the church. And after they were removed, the Bible says that he be, you saw healing and deliverance and the glory of God came into that time and into the church and the presence of God was rich and mighty. That is what we want to see at Ellerton Wesleyan in a, in a 
greater measure, we are seeing some good things and some excellent things, but we want to see some greater things occur. As Jesus said, uh, the works that I do, you will do also, but greater than these you shall do because I am going back to my Father. When I go back, I'm going to re release the Holy Spirit to you so that he will be able to do great and mighty things through your lives. I believe and I emphasize and underscore that the Lord prophetically spoke into this church here right in the center of the island. He has established this church as a marvelous lighthouse to the nation. And we've seen that uh, working out so many times, not only here in Barbados, but throughout the Caribbean and throughout the world, as we have seen so many bright sparks of Car um, Allerton uh, in the lives of persons whom God has trained and put them in different areas to fulfill his purpose. But we are setting up, we have divided the church into seven, seven, seven groups. And uh, we've been asking you to sign up from last Sunday in one of the groups. Each group would have 45 individuals. I want to see those who've already signed up. Put your hands up. Wow, how beautiful. Yes, excellent. But I've seen some hands that haven't gone up yet. So I'm looking forward to your signing up today. We are going to have uh, the line outside um, with the specific areas, uh, groupings, actually. In fact, I'm told that one of the group uh, is almost full. Uh, so make sure that you sign up today. Did you hear me right? Yes, sign up today. Now, the groups. One, we have, we have the foundation builders. And that has to do with family as you pray. I'm not going through all the fine areas of that. Then we have the, the mountain movers, those who are holding tightly onto God in faith. The mountain movers. If you move this, if you pray, no mountain, Jesus said to disciples, can move. And he used that in the figurative sense of the word. Then the third group, the barren bearers. These are those now who are will be praying and, and calling forth by faith. In the Lord, uh, those things that are not productive, prosperity and fruitfulness will spring forth in bountiful ways, not only in your lives, but also in the lives of others. And then we have the hunters. The hunters are those individuals who are looking out so that men and women can come into a relationship with Christ. Those who have who never had a relationship with God, those who are backslidden, and the whole live in your workplaces, wherever. They are praying that God would change the lives of many. And then we have the destroyers. These are those who are into spiritual warfare, destroying the assault of the enemy upon the church. You remember that the very first week in, uh, in November, the Lord led us into a solemn assembly. And he opened up my, my spiritual eyes to see ten evil, uh, two, ten evil spirits. Well, there were eleven because the chief was in charge of all of them. And two were in the church, two on the west, east, north, south. And God used us that for first week, uh, that week in, in November together as we came together every night. And we were able to break the power and the intent of the enemy so that we are now enjoying some victory. But don't fool yourself. The enemy just goes away for a season. As we read in the book of Luke chapter 4 with Jesus. And don't ever think that he hasn't gone away to strategize. Um, and hence God has put these, um, these um, seven groupings in place. So that we can. This group that the destroyers. Um, you have a tremendous work to do. Uh, all of us do. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, not human, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. And that is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. Then we have the restorers. These are those who are praying that God will restore um, those things that have been um, 
extracted from your lives by the enemy and uh, that God would bring back into sharpness of focus that which is significant as it relates now to, to unity and harmony and cohesion, oneness. And uh, then we have the unifiers, Ephesians 4, 8 through 16. These are those uh, where God has released uh, specific giftings into the body of Christ so that these individuals, uh, the church rather, can come into oneness of purpose so that God will be glorified. I want to give God thanks for you. I want to let you know that, and we will do this next Sunday morning. Uh, that's why today we give you a little leverage, those who have not signed up. But next Sunday morning, we're going to have, a, uh, we're going to be setting apart these leaders. All the leaders have been chosen already and confirmed. And uh, I want you to know that when we come together next Sunday morning, we are going to be setting apart this special group because of the, I mean, the seven uh, leaders, um, seven groups, group leaders, as well as the top leader, the, the person who will be ordina uh, coordinating the groups. And we are going to release that which is significant. And then we are going to be not saying prayers. We will be praying. Are you with me? We'll be praying. And let this church be known as a church of prayer. It, I, like, I would like to see the largest attendance in prayer meetings. I mean, the largest. Jesus told the disciples, me, you can't even pray for me for one hour? You can't pray for me for one hour? You do all a million other things for many hours. I only want an hour? He told them in rebuke. But I, we won't have to do that. But I believe that everyone will be on board so that the good Lord would do great things. Finally, I want to you remember we, we spoke a couple of Sundays ago that we need you to look at four things that you're going to get rid of. Things that will retard, hinder your growth and development. And then there are four other things you're going to pull in that you haven't pulled in to make your life sharp in focus and to glorify God and make you productive and meaningful. There are some persons who came to me and told me they've already, they've already done the thing. How I trust that everybody will do that because in the larger, uh, largest body, we want to pray very specially as well. So next Sunday is going to be plenty of prayer as the word, of course, will be spoken, but definitely we want to set apart and the seriousness of this whole question of prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let us pray. Amen. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, can we stand as we bless this morning's offering? Hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks because your word tells us that you add riches without sorrows. That we don't get the pain that the world gets from laboring because we labor for your kingdom. And God, you are a God who blesses and you bless bountifully. We give you thanks, God, for your goodness and your favor and your mercies and your provisions and your providence and your hand of protection and covering over our lives, oh God. We can testify each day we stand, we are above ground, that you are good that your mercies endureth forever from the rising of the sun until the setting of the same you are to be glorified. And we give you thanks to God. It is our intention to pour back into your house, to pour back into your storerooms 
a small piece of what you have done and the ways in which you have blessed us. So God, we pray that our offerings will be acceptable in your sight, that you will be glorified, that you will smile down on us as we give from the depths of our hearts, oh God, to show our humble appreciation for all you've done, God, all you're doing, the things to come, and all of the blessings on the way. We pray the money will continue to be used for the furtherance of your kingdom so that people can be saved and lives can be changed and improved so that you, God, will get the glory. Bless us as we give back unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.
Come on, come on, come on back. You got to give us some more of that first song. Let's stand, church. Let's stand, church. There are some words in there that I told you were so powerful. Bring it on. The first one that you let in, my brother. Let's do some decoration this morning. Right here. church and we bless God for the Ellerton Wesleyan Holiness Church which is Anne. Let me first welcome all of you to church today whether you are a member of the Ellerton Wesleyan Holiness Church or not you do feel welcome today. We ask you that if you are here for the first time visiting with us for first time in a long time if you are that person just stand and give us a quick wave um, so that we can fall in love with you all over again or for the first time. Any visitors in the house? 
Come on, come on. Good people. Good people. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks for coming out. Amen. So happy to have the Heinz generation with us. All right. And congratulations. God bless you. God bless you. So good to have you at church today. I'm your preacher this morning. And we want to give attention to the word of God. In a few short moments, Reverend Griffith, you might see him slipping out. He has another assignment. Reverend Hall is sitting at the back, so you're well covered for this time. This year, we are running under the theme, The Journey Continues. And I'm hoping today that by the end of this sermon, we would even think more regarding our lives, who we are, what we are doing I had a sister in my former church at West Village, St. John, and she would always make this comment that should Jesus come a Sunday morning, Christians would go to be with him, all of them, because that is our most holy day. That was her interpretation. But she always questioned that if Jesus came a Monday or a Saturday night, you know, that some of those people might not qualify. I've grown to understand really that Jesus is always looking at our heart. You understand? So you could be here on Sunday morning and your heart could be far from Jesus. But you could be out on Saturday night and your heart could be very, very close to Jesus. We are always to make sure that we are in the will of God. Amen? Today's sermon is entitled, Running on E. Anybody pull into the petrol station recently? You have a needle in your vehicle. And it says F, usually up and at the top. And then at the other end, you have E. Most people in here always run on F in your vehicle. You know, they have some people like that. From the time that the needle began coming down to midway, they pull into this station. I bless God for you because there are some of us. <laughs> we know how to test the needle. I didn't even have to witness it. Look at the hands up. Huh? Wow. I was going down to a conference yesterday. On Friday, rather. And I was early, as usual. I was early, and the light came on. And the light didn't come on to say that I was full. It was the orange light that came up on the dashboard and said, ah, head to the petrol station. I have some brothers, and we spoke yesterday in the churchyard, on Friday in the churchyard. My good brother Cosman said, ah, don't worry about when my light comes on, man. I could get to St. Lucian back. But listen to me, when I see E or when the light comes on, I remember something. I remember when it was courting. My beautiful wife, Sandra, went, oh, Lord. I bought my first vehicle and I was fussy. It was not the best. It was a smoke mobile. Smoke used to come through the front. But she loved me and it, it, it extended to the car. So we would go out in this smoke mobile. The lights didn't work properly, so the police stopped us. And we had to keep driving on them. Because when it went on bright, it was only one light. So I was coming into Ellerton from St. John. I was going to be courting my beautiful bride-to-be. That's what good Christians do on sa Saturday evening. You go and you see your girlfriend until it's time to leave. That's what good Christian men do. And when they pull in at the corner of Ellerton, you know it because you travel on it. The car said, Simma here. <laughs> I don't think that the needle worked. I ran out of gas. I didn't even know that I was on E. I was tempted to park the car nicely 
and then tap through the back, this church would not have been here. And this road would have been a good escape for me to head on down to Buckley because my sister, she lives in Buckley and she would have rescued me. I ran on E and didn't even know. Empty. I said, what to do now, Lord? What will you do? I parked the car there. And I kept my eyes on Sanja's house. Sanja's house was like five houses from where the car brought down. On the right. And I kept my eyes on the house. And I left the car. Astro. And I didn't look at the house. Because the house is on the right. And I walked and I passed. And I thank God that she did not look out. <laughs> thank God for a good sister. She's here this morning. She rescued me. Listen, we, we can push ourselves to the point where we run out of gas, where we run out of air, where we run out of energy, where we run out of any and everything the Lord has deposited in us. And we keep going, going, going all the time and refuse to stop and to be refilled. Spiritually, that can happen to us as well. Spiritually, because we can do the things that we know that we are supposed to do, that everybody else is doing, and we can fit into the crowd. But when we turn the corner, usually in a familiar place, boom, out of gas, out of air, out of energy. It happened to me a few houses away from where Sandra lived. But she loved me so much, she still followed through with the vows. There is an account, a parable that was given in Matthew chapter 25. You're so familiar with it. Running on E. Matthew 25 from verse 25. Then the kingdom of heaven, New Living Translation. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil in their lamp, but those but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Verse 5, Matthew 25. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Fell asleep. At midnight, there was a rouse by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. And the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others reply, we don't have enough for us, for all of us. We don't have enough for all of us. But go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. But when they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. Verse 11, later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Running on E. And you can test yourself. You can know the gauge of your life. You can know exactly in yourself where you are in your relationship to God. You're in your relationship to others. In your course of life. Because it's several areas of your life that you can measure. Whether you choose to run on E. And we know that one is empty. But believe me, you can run on E if to you that's enough. Or you can still run on E if that's extra. All ten were female. All ten were bridesmaids. They got the memo. The bridegroom is coming. Let's go to meet him. They looked alike. They turned up at the same place. And they knew exactly what they were called to do. How easy it for, for us to respond to calls. How easy it for us to get dressed up and to be ready 
to answer call. Call to work, call to school, call to help, call to church. A call for us to respond. They had the right date. They had the right outfit. Had the hair and nails done. And they were ready. This is different to the weddings. We do. I've done a lot of weddings. And there's never a wedding on the bridegroom. Never. There's always a wedding on the, and you say bride. In the book of Matthew, in this parable, there's no guessing at all. Verse 2 says, five were wise and five were foolish. And when you and I read that, we are expecting something to happen. Something is going to happen that's going to differentiate between one group and the other. If we were doing primary school prayers, I would have your hands in the air. Ten hands up. And then five down. And how many, how many left? But mainly adults are here this morning because the children are downstairs. Half, 50% were wise and 50% were foolish. And when we begin to read that, we are anticipating what is going to happen. What is going to happen to separate the foolish from the wise or the wise from the foolish? We are going to be expecting different results. The wise made a good decision. They knew that when they would go to see the bridegroom, that he could be delayed. He could be delayed because in Bible times, the weddings and the ceremonies and the celebration was different to how we do it now. They could have had day one and day two and day three of celebration. To my mind, let's picture that the bridegroom was going to be coming. And he's going to be coming with his new bride. And they were going to feast. They were going to feast. And because of what they might have been doing before, they can easily be delayed. So when there is a delay, when there's a punctuation, where there's a full stop, where there is a pause in the road, we must prepare ourselves. We must prepare ourselves. So the first wife said, what I have in my lamp is not good enough. The lamp is cool. The wick is working. It is lighted. It is burning. But the five wives made a decision that they're going to bring along extra. So they walk with an extra container. See my good friend Reggie there? When we go walking, we like to carry the lightest. Some of you, when you go walking, will carry along a whole container of water. Some of you, when you go walking, you have snacks in your bag and everything. Most people, when they go walking, try to not carry along extra. These five knew why they were going and they had an extra can in their hand. An extra vessel in their hand. Because they believe that if the bridegroom is delayed, they would have enough. Enough is a good word. Extra is a good word. But E also stands for empty. The wise made a good decision. But I must remind you that the foolish made a bad decision. Oh, no man, I'm not taking anything extra. What I have is enough. The last time we had a wedding around here, the bridegroom came early and I didn't have to use the extra can. So I am not carrying no extra. Are we like that sometimes? Hmm? We look back on our lives. We look back at the things that happened before. Maybe how church went, how God worked in, in your life. And we can quickly revert to something that happened before and, and, and cast our mind on that and think that that is enough. No. The anointing that you received last week, believe me, the Holy Spirit, he is still active in your life if you continue to work on your relationship with him. If you continue to allow him to be in your life. The anointing that you received last week, if you went through this week and you did all sorts of things, leaving God out of the equation, I'm going to ask you, what, 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 what do you think you are running on this week? If you depended on what, what how church went last week and what was said. And if during the week you never gone into the word. You never communicated with God. You never stopped to listen to what God might have been saying. Maybe you are not running on full. You might be running on empty. Wise people plan and they plan well. Wise people plan because they know that everything does not end at the day that there's going to be tomorrow. So you leave back something for tomorrow. They know that if things don't work out 
with plan A that they have a backup plan. That's why it's people. You plan for your family. You plan your finances well. You say to some things, no, I will not take part in that because I have a different plan. The foolish, on the other hand, will just spend and do what they want. And then they come and beg the wise. It's here in the word. The foolish is getting ready to, with a plan. They, they, they were probably thinking, Sister Dolores, that if they run out, they could always come and ask your husband. He, he has a good heart. And he will give you a little of what is left back. Wise planning, a wise decision, extra, is what the wise did. They had more than enough. And they didn't mind carrying an extra container and a, a walker with extra weight. True to form, the bridegroom was delayed. It was delayed to the extent that all ten bridesmaids had time to sleep. They fell asleep. It was a long wait. It was a long wait. Marge officers know the discomfort in waiting on the bride. Oh, I've had a three-hour wait already. Yes, I stayed. When he got to the church, the bride was at the church. When she wasn't dressed, she was there decorating the church. So I had to wait for the bride and her party to go home and, and wow. So I found a nice way of dealing with it. <coughs> Most of the weddings I do, I know people. So there's no charge involved. But I started introducing the late fee. I'll give you half an hour free. I'm doing your wedding. So all oh, you fellas down there, and Mario's yet, all you tech people down there, I can do your wedding. Free. I give you half an hour to get to the church, you and the bride. But if you come late, $300. After half an hour, 300 Listen, I don't get people coming late anymore because they realize there's a cost attached to coming. I tell them, no, this is free. What you are paying is a late fee. If you tell me 3 o'clock, come on, don't be coming through the gate. The bridegroom in this story was delayed. I don't know how long, but the women fell asleep. The virgins, the bridesmaids fell asleep, all 10 of them. But I thank God for watchmen, people who will keep their eyes open. Because at midnight, there was a cry. There was somebody else in this account here that were not the bridesmaid, the groom. But I call him a watchman because at midnight. Somebody made a cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Get up. Let's go and meet. And believe me, that's where the big separation came between the wise and the foolish. Oh. You see, Brother Mike, we, we could be all looking the same and being the same place. And we don't wear uniforms, so we may not dress the same. But we can have so much in common. And there could be one thing. How many things? Just one. There could be one thing that will separate you from making it into the kingdom of God. It could be one thing. What's it? One can of oil. Extra oil. Well, the shout went out and they all got up. They all trimmed their lamps. They made their lamps ready. But then the five foolish realized that there was something different about theirs. That the wise own were burning and theirs were going out. I'm telling you, some people, wise, wise people, the foolish would come to drain you and to trick you and give you all sorts of sad stories in order for you to continue to help them in their foolishness. Don't give in to that. Oh, you are a child of God and if you had any heart, you would give me. Talk to these five wise ones. The foolish came up and asked them, please give us of your oil. And they said, no. No. And we as children of the Lord, we need to have some no in our mouth for some people. Otherwise, they're going to pull you down and out. Could they? No. That's why we need to know exactly how the Lord will want us to respond to every situation. As a church, we continue to give. 
We continue to serve. And we gave and we gave happily. And we never do it from the pulpit or even talk about those who we have helped. But don't you know behind the scenes we have to provide some counsel? Hmm? We have to tell people. Right? I have some fellas here in the community that I have to write out for them. <laughs> I told somebody, get a black lead. But some people don't know it's a black lead. Anybody know it's a black lead? You got to get a black lead and, and write for them. Now, how many splits you had this day at the end of the day? $5 each by four is $20. 20 by seven. Seven days a week, that's $140. Listen, a lot of us in here who are wise can do with an extra $140 a week. You understand? And you have people coming to beg you out of what you have because they cannot kick a bad habit. And help is, is provided for them. And on and on, people do, do what they want to do and they can come to the wise. Yes, we are very compassionate, but there comes a time where you have to say no. Give us of your oil. And the wife said, no. They said, but you are a Christian. They said, that's why we ain't doing it. Because we understand that you had an opportunity to fill up. But they chose to run on E. Anyhow, the wife gave them some good advice. They said, if you have money, you can go to the shop. That's good advice. Huh? I can't help you, but you go over there. And they went to buy, but when they came back, the door was not only shut, but according to the New Living Translation, it was locked. The bridegroom had come and he had gone in. And the party had begun and they were knocking, knocking on the door. The five foolish when they came back, lamps trimmed and now they were burning. And I believe if they had enough sense at that time that they would have brought no extra, extra oil. But what had happened was too late. The door was shut. And when the door is shut, it means you cannot get in. That is, you are on the outside. Come on. They will plead. They will plead and say, come on, but I did this and I did that. And we were together and we all slept together. And when I came here, the lamp was burning. And if you didn't stay so long, I would get to come in. And some people can come up with the best excuses ever. You know that? And throw a blame, break room. If you had come early, the lines would have been working. Jesus was giving this parable, and I hear his words. I do not know you. I don't know you. Don't know me. Don't know me, and they preach. You don't know me. I was a Christian since I was in my teen. You don't know me. And it worked so hard for, for the church even before it became a pastor. Don't know me. And on and on we can pile on the reasons. But we have to be extremely careful that one thing in our life will not separate us from God. And that we will stand outside. What is your habit? What is it that God might have been trying to get you to give up so that you can run not on empty but merely Maybe run full. You can knock and holler all you want when the door is closed, it is closed. It's very, very sad news. And we can live and experience joy in our Christian experience. And we, we can have a, a very good, okay relationship with God. But you know, sometimes we are tested. I mean, tested beyond what is normal. And to my mind, those are some of the times when we are called to dig deep. Those are some times, huh? Loss of a loved one. You got to dig deep. All the money gone, you got to dig deep. Problems in the family, dig deep. The business is not working out good, dig deep. Huh? The creditor is knocking on your door, dig deep. You are not feeling good and you're afraid to go to the doctor, you have to go deep. Here are a few things in closing. We need to keep watch. We need to top up early. How would you choose to top up? How would you top up? I believe that prayer will have to be one of them. Praying regularly. How would you top up? Reading God's word. 
Here's the third one. When you do all of that, walk in obedience. Come on. Walk in obedience to God. If you're praying, believe the prayers. Don't utter prayers out of your mouth that you're not going to bring along the faith to match it. You're just uttering words. When you pray, you ask God for something. Let's believe God. Keep watch. Keep watch. Be wise. Act wisely. Stay alert. Prepare and plan ahead. If I were to say a lot of stuff today as to maybe some of the reasons that you may have or be tempted to not walk close to God and not ever run out of gas. I may not be able to hit the nail on the head, but you know, you know who you are. You know the things that God has been speaking to you and tell you to do and the things that he's told you not to do. So you need to prepare and plan ahead and be ready. Make good decisions. Bring the right people along. There are times when you are called to stand up and to speak up. Don't miss out on those opportunities. Don't know what words some of you communicate when you are out of church. Hopefully you don't see them in church. But watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Have people who testify of knowing God and their tongue is not clean. Watch your words. We are not a people who are put here to curse. Be a good team member. If you are working for God, whether you are being paid or not, whether you are working on the job, whether you are making a contribution in your home or to your community, turn up and give it your best. Pay attention. Run on full, people. More faith. Do more. And some of you in here this morning need to be reminded to take responsibility for the wrongs that you have done. Stop blaming people. It's you. Stop blaming people. You know it is you. And you may be able to conquer the other person with your words and your attitude and, and, and all of that. But it is you if you know it is you. Stop that. Don't let one thing stop you from entering into the kingdom of God. We are running this year. We are on a journey. And the journey is continuing. Five of the foolish stepped off and didn't even realize that they couldn't make it all the way. And five wise went all the way in to that feast. Let not one thing. How is it with you and your relationship with others? Hmm? How is it with your relationship and, and, and the others? Because we can pretend that, that we have such a f fantastic relationship with God, you know. But how is it with you and others? And it's not that as on everything we're going to agree, but I believe that we still need to maintain good, wholesome relationship. We need to. Because we need each other. We need each other. So be careful what you say about a third party. Be extremely careful what you say because some of the things that you repeat if you didn't hear it yourself from the source will be a lie. So be careful how you repeat and what you say. I believe these are good tips for us to make sure that we end up on the wise side and not on the, the foolish side. Let's store up some heavenly treasures. Let's be rich in God. Did they say it before? Get into the word of God. And pray. And respond to what he would say. Running on empty is not good enough. Running out of gas. Or if you're running, running out of air. Never enough. If you are choosing the letter E and you want to run on E, run on enough. Run on extra. A better option would be to run on full. Those who look alike, those who were in the same company doing the same thing, five eventually got the prize and five didn't. What about you? What about you? Is there one thing that you are still grappling with that the Lord will want for you to surrender? I want to tell you, don't run on empty. Don't run on empty. Let's run on full.
I want to pray for somebody. And you're just going to raise your hand and say, God, I just want to keep on running on full. Or I, I, I need you in my life. There's one area, thank you, one area of my life that maybe I need to surrender to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. And sometimes we can get lost with familiar stories that we've been hearing from the time we were young. But I am hoping today that God would want you, as you raise your hand, to identify that one thing. And say to Almighty God, draw me closer to you. Draw me closer to you. Closer. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the precious bleeding side. Let's pray. Father in God, this is, this is our cry today, Lord. That like the wise virgins, Lord, we would always be full, top, top, having enough. More than that, having an extra as it relates to you and our relationship, Lord. We believe today you have spoken through a very, very familiar passage. And the sad part of this God is that those who were not prepared and those who were foolish ended up being outside their God of the feast. Your word is tell us in verse 13 of the scripture, Lord, that we need to be careful. We must keep watch for we do not know the hour or the day of the Lord's return. How critical is that to us? So may we observe the times and the season and be ready, oh God, when you come. Not leaving out one thing. Help us to surrender, oh God, everything that we may have that will hinder. Whether it's a bad habit, whether it's anger, our choice of words, God. Drinking too much bad relationships Lord refusing to apologize and increasing in anger in, in our chest refusing to pray and to read your word Lord refusing to surrender our all to you refusing to follow or to be filled with your Holy Spirit God for those who have raised their hand this morning we ask that you will respond to their needs and for others who are pondering and may not have had the opportunity to get their hand up, I pray that you will see their heart and change them and make them all that you would want them to be. Teach us, Lord, to run always full of your Holy Spirit and not running on empty. Thank you. We bless you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Here's a second appeal for anyone here who would like to invite Jesus into your heart. You're saying, I'm not saved. I do not have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to start one today. If that's you, put your hand in the air and give us the opportunity to pray with you. Hallelujah. Let's keep my name God. Good morning to you. I believe we can show some great appreciation to our senior pastor for sharing the word of the Lord with us today. And I can see Sister Sanja already telling him that I am wearing the same tie as him this morning. And I, I remember that I had a, a good mark teacher at school who, Mr. Baker, would always say, Great minds think alike, our fools seldom differ. We're so thankful for Reverend Trotman, our senior pastor, for his leadership here at the Ellerton Wesley Holiness Church. And we just encourage you to continue to lift him up in prayer, even as he leads us, and as we continue to work with him in the leadership of the church here at Ellerton Wesleyan. The reason, the main reason I'm here, though, is to just share a few notices with you today. 
So be with me. Junior Church and Nursery would have did start this morning at 8 a.m. Um, I believe that's continuing during our Sunday school hour that is coming up. So our church school will commence around 10 o'clock this morning. Um, some classes may begin just a little bit earlier, but our, our start time is scheduled to be 10 this morning, as well as the nursery will continue during that time as well for those of you who may be joining another uh, Sunday school class. Just reminding you that our Bible study will restart early in February, so st stay tuned for that. The exact date will be shared with you very, very shortly. This Wednesday coming, we will be continuing prayer here at the church at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, and we are asking you to continue to bring your requests as you come on Wednesdays so that we can support each other as we pray over several areas that each of us would bring to present before the Lord. We trust that for those who would have come out previously, we know that there are testimonies already of how God is working in the lives of our members. And we want to encourage those of you who may not yet have had the opportunity to turn up on a Wednesday evening to, to plan to do so this Wednesday, actually this Wednesday will be the final time because we're ending this in the month of January. So you have one last opportunity to come and let us join with you as we bring some of your requests before the Lord. On Friday, February the 2nd, our youth will meet here at the church at Ellerton at 7.30, but they're meeting for a meeting of the Central Zone where all of the Young people from the other five churches in the central zone will come together here at the Ellerton Wesleyan for a meeting. If you're part of the youth department here, you're welcome to be part of that meeting as well. On Saturday, on Saturday the 3rd of February, the church school will have the annual party at the church here. It starts at 4 o'clock in the evening. And you are invited to be part of the activities of our church school's annual celebration. Upcoming as well, this is a couple of weeks away, but we are giving you advance notice on it. And Reverend Livy and Sister Sandra can make sure that I get this right uh, because I, I struggle a little bit with it. But it says relational intimacy. Thank you so much. Intimacy, and it's spelled a little bit unusual, but you, you will get it as well as we pronounce it. The next level. The next level. And it's a, a call for, of our marriage ministry to join us in the Lord's Sanctuary on Saturday, February the 10th at 6 o'clock in the evening for a pre-Valentine's social, which will be facilitated by one of our Wesleyan pastors, the Reverend Dr. Sylvan Parkway. So if you are married or on the cross, if you are, if you set a wedding date and you want to join us, do plan to come out on Saturday, the Feb February the 10th at 6 p.m. as we meet together for a time of teaching and a time of fellowship as well. And we continue that call for all of, all of you who believe that you are skilled as a dramatist or playwright. The drama ministry needs some additional hands on deck. And we're asking you to reach out, please. Reach out to Brother Ryan. I believe he's on the ramp, on the balcony, sorry, so you may not see him. But Sister Patricia may be in house. She is. Just asking you to stand very quickly so people can identify some of those individuals. And Brother Garnet, who led us so beautifully this morning and singing after the after the offering was collected. So speak to one of these individuals if you believe that you can make a contribution to the drama ministry of our church. On Friday, we convened and concluded our, I believe it was our 87th annual district conference. And at the rise of conference, we are able to confirm to you 
that we were able to elect a new district superintendent in the person of the Reverend Virgil Paris, as well as a new assistant district superintendent in the person of Reverend Ronnie Quimby. I believe it's a good time to give them a round of applause. The installation of these two officers, as well as all the other members of our district board of administration and other committees, the installation service will be held this evening at 5.30 p.m. at the White Park, at the Mount of Prayers, sorry, Mount of Prayers, where in Holiness Church. And this is not exclusive to those who, who, are, who are being installed, but this is open to all of us as members of the church. So do make a plan to join us this evening at the Mount of Praise Wesleyan. We do ask you as well to continue to keep our sister Rosalind in prayer. We did um, meet here just on Friday afternoon for the homegoing service of our sister Sandri. And we trust that you will continue to lift our sister in prayer even as she, still, she and her family continues to experience and to process the loss of her dear, dear, sister, dear daughter, sorry. I think it said sister before, daughter of Sister Rosalind. Birthdays and anniversaries this week. Today, Sunday the 28th of January, we have celebrating with us today is Hyacinth Skeet, Sister Hyacinth Skeet, Sister Sandra Burke, Sister Jenny Brown and Brother Tony Blenman, they're celebrating today. And then tomorrow, Monday, the 29th of January, our Brother Dave Lowe will be celebrating his birthday. And on Tuesday, Brother Alfonso King and Brother David Griffith. I'm bringing up the rear to close out the month of January on Wednesday, the 31st, is our Brother Ronald Lashley. Let's give them a round of applause. And let's hear a loud shout out as well. If you were or are celebrating the month of January, let's hear a loud shout from you this morning as we close out the month of January in our service today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I hope that the February people will outdo you next month. But coming up in the month of February this week, on Friday, we have two people celebrating, our sister Marcel Bell and sister Alexis Brown. Let's give them a round of applause as well. There are no anniversaries on our list, but if perchance you are not a member of the church, you are perhaps in the audience and you have a celebration this week, you can put your hand up and we will acknowledge you and rejoice with you as you Go into that celebration, whatever that may be. I don't see any hands. I haven't seen any hands gone up, so we can move on. But do remember, church, to continue to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. And we're unable to greet those people this morning because of the loss of connectivity. But do bear in mind that we still want you, if you can, to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any friends and close individuals who you know are normally on YouTube this morning, please let them know that we, we were experiencing some issues that were beyond our control, and hopefully those issues will be rectified very, very shortly as we continue to give and serve our communities through our YouTube platform. Do stand with me this morning as we do the benediction. We're not able to put it on the projector, but I can lead you in it, those of you who may not be familiar with it. Here at the Elton Wesley Holiness Church, we keep our eyes open. We look at someone in proximity. Sometimes we like to say, perhaps not the person you came to church with. But if you want to look at the person you came to church with, that's quite okay as well. But let's repeat the benediction together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you as you go. God bless you.
I'm not going through the O's. I'm going to the hard part.